Hi, I'm Ethity. I'm an eclectic witch who loves fall and Halloween like nobody's business. But I have a problem. I don't have anything funky for my Samhain altar and that needs to change. So we're going to be looking at finding stuff, buying stuff and DIYing stuff to change all that and make an amazing Samhain altar. I'm fueled up, ready to go, feeling witchy and we're going to hit Michael's. <laughs> What are we getting in Michael's today, Anthony? Certainly not more feeding supplies. We are going to be looking for a raven or a skull. Those are things I'm really, really interested in finding. Well, there's definitely some skulls here. Oh, I found a raven. Those are cute. This is home take all right. Somewhat. <laughs> I think we might be getting this. It sort of serves two purposes. It's it's kind of got a vibe that I'm looking for. Here's the problem though. It's my favorite time of year. Why is a Christmas tree out? I feel like this is a personal affront to Halloween and how dare they? How dare they? Mission successful. To the next place. I have to hit the dollar store to find the witchy shit to put it on our altar. Oh, I should put my hands on the steering wheel. I? I was just entering the, um, the parking lot. I was going I want to find some candies for an offering and maybe they might have some decor in there. So let's go have a look. Let's go. Already getting distracted. Look at these little okay, candy we're get, offerings. We're these. Look, the little skulls. The skeletons. These are pretty cute. Okay, that's perfect. That would potentially look very cute. She creepy and she creepy. Seriously. We're gonna get this because it's too. $2.50 and I think an LED light under this would throw some really cool shadows and shit. I just think it's really rude that like they just have green witches. I feel like this portrays an unhealthy stereotype. I do not look like any of those things. Something tells me I should have got a car. Do you want me to go get you one? Yeah. Don't tell me how to Halloween. What would you normally recommend people put on their Samhain altar for a table covering? I like these because if you get wax or whatever on them, it's not going to ruin the table. So I think we're going to get one of these. Oh my god, I want it. Now sissy that wow. I am very, very dramatic. Hello, goodbye. Bring it to the runway. Runway. Bring it to the runway. Now, sissy, that wow. Now we're back and we've collected all of our goodies and we're going to put our Samhain altar together. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Samhain and why I'm putting what I'm putting on the altar and what it means for the holiday. This is the cover that I got from the Dollar Tree and we're just going to put that over the entire table. Please protect your tables, candle wax and everything can get everywhere, it's very unpredictable. You don't want to ruin something really pretty with candle wax. Now I'm using quite a big coffee table, but you can use any size altar, any space from a shoebox all the way to something like this. So don't feel as though you have to have something big and flashy for it to be meaningful. Samhain is one of the witches' sabbats and it is a Gaelic festival that marks the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter. In the Northern Hemisphere, it is traditionally celebrated at sundown on the 31st of October. In the Southern Hemisphere, it is on May 1st. Out in nature, Samhain is when the leaves start to shed from the trees. They've changed those colours from the beautiful green of summer to the reds, oranges and yellows of the season of autumn. Coming into winter, the trees are going to become bare and the leaves will become brown and decayed. The weather is cooler and the nights are longer and here in Vancouver, it just rains a lot and it's cold outside. <laughs> Samhain is a celebration of honouring the cycle of life, death and rebirth. For anyone who's lost someone that they love, this is a beautiful time to not only remember them and have them maybe at your dinner table with a setting to them, but also healing and grieving and going through that entire process at this time of the veil thinning. It's also a wonderful time for all forms of divination and also remembering your ancestors and loved ones that have passed. Now I'm gonna go on to some correspondences for Samhain. So these are goddesses and gods and even archangels, you could use Samael. Any being that is connected to the underworld or death. So we have here, for example, the Greek goddess Hecate. There is also the Morrigan and Hell. 
You could also use Persephone, there is Keridwen, and you also have gods such as Hades and Anubis that are also connected to death rites. And those aren't the only ones, but they're just some that you can look into and work with at this time. The colors of Samhain are very, very obvious if you start to look in any sort of store that celebrates Halloween. We have got all of the oranges, reds, purple, black. Those are pretty big colors for Samhain and you also have gold and white. Now, when it comes to altar decorations, really whatever you can get your hands on, remember you don't have to break the bank and also have fun, enjoy putting your altars up. You can even just pass it off as some fun family decor or some fun decor in your house if people start to ask why you've got such a large Samhain offering. You can put pumpkins, gourds, even apples at this time of year can be put on your altar. You can go out in nature and pick up some acorns that have fallen from trees, put them on there, or find beautiful leaves that are starting to turn and also put them on your Samhain altar. Bones, skulls, masks are all fantastic as well. You can even put photos of those who have past and that you love on your altar as well. Place on your altar black and white candles or gold, yellow or orange and also your besom or cauldron. Now I have minis of both of these and that's what I use. And of course remember you can use all divination tools and you put them on your altar as well. Food is very much connected to this final harvest. So foods such as pumpkin soups or anything to do with squashes, things like that, mulled wine, cheese, cornbread, think very hearty meals and also potatoes. Potato, potato. Some fruits, spices and herbs you can use for the season include rosemary for remembrance, mugwort for divination, marigold and chrysanthemums for protection, pomegranates, apples, rowan berries to keep spirits at bay and then your nuts and acorns. Now that we've set up our Samhain altar, here are some of the ways you can celebrate the Sabbath. You can hold a All Hallows feast where you have a place set at your table for a deceased loved one or an ancestor. You can even place a photo at the table or on their seat. You can even have one of their favorite meals or even a little bit of rum or spirits and some candy to make sure they know that they're remembered. Add extra fun by decorating the table with all of the wonderful fall and Samhain inspired items, such as leaves, acorns, and all of the beautiful pumpkins. You can hold a bonfire if you have space outside. Bonfires are a part of a lot of celebrations in the witch's wheel. And druids are said to use these bonfires for different types of sacrifices. So what you can do, you can make a little straw person and you can burn it and sacrifice anything that you don't want to bring into the new year and make some good changes. You can also visit a gravesite or a cemetery and leave a little offering of flowers or candy or anything that is like spirits candles, anything to say that you remember your loved ones to clean up the gravesite or the little cemetery plot and just hold a few moments of remembrance for your ancestors. Journaling and reflecting about what you have learned this year is another fantastic way to celebrate Samhain. What are the things that you have grown in spring and seeing all the way through to fruition at the end of summer and then harvested throughout this harvest season? What has it taught you? Where are your strengths and your weaknesses? And what are you going to learn for next year? You can have a ritual or spell for release and transformation. Many of the mythologies around this time are about sacrificial gods or goddesses, making sure that they are refreshing the land so when the sun returns at Yule, things can start to grow again in the spring. But without that sacrifice, without that release and transformation, the new things do not grow. So you can write it down or you can place it in a small petition bag and burn it or bury it and then release it so that you can become spring anew when the sun returns. And of course, tarot and divination work. As I mentioned before, all divination work is particularly powerful at this time of year. It's a wonderful time to close out things or to set 
forecast for the coming year as well. You can scry with black mirrors or with crystal balls or use your favorite tarot or oracle deck. And don't forget to call in your spirit guides to help you as they are particularly chatty this time of year. Speaking of divination, make sure you go and check out my spooky list of top oracle decks for the Halloween season this year by clicking here. What are you putting on your altar this year for Samhain? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you all next time.